Hey guys, and thank you for clicking on this video. Today, I'm going to let you guys know four tips on how to buy your laptop. Just to let you know, this guy can be used for regular computers as well. And let me know down in the comments below if you guys want me to do a specific buying guide for Mac computers. So let's get to my first tip. Tip number one is all about the user. You're going to ask yourself the five W's. So the first question is who is going to be using this computer? Are you a high school student? Maybe you're a university design student. So you want to ask yourself who is going to be using this computer? Second is what? What are you going to be using this computer for? So you want to be very general with this. Maybe it's just to do homework or to design. You just want to give yourself a general reason for what you'll be using this computer for. Third, you're going to ask yourself where. Where are you going to be using this computer? Are you going to be doing really long commutes and using it while you're in school? Or if you're like me, when I was in high school, we could not use our laptops in school. So you'll probably just use it while you're at home. The next W is when which is actually how often you're gonna be using the computer, but it's the five W's, so I can't say how. So we're just gonna say when. For example, like I said before, you might be using this computer commuting to school, while you're at school, commuting back home, and while you're at home. You might be using this computer for six to 10 hours. Whereas if you're a high school student, you're most likely using it for three to five after you get home from school. And the last W is why. So this is why you wanna get more specific on why you are getting this laptop. If you are an architectural student, you might be specifically getting a laptop because you want to use AutoCAD. If you're a design student, you might want Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Think of the specific applications that you're using it for. Tip number two is all about the tech. So I'm going to try to make this as not so techy as possible. First, we have the CPU processor. Now you can think of the processor of the brain of the computer. This basically tells everything in the computer what to do. So when you click on an application, say like Microsoft Word, the processor is telling the computer to open up that application. Next up, we have the RAM, which is like the short-term memory of the computer. So it basically keeps your current apps running in the background. So whenever you go to click it to reopen it, it doesn't have to reboot and start all over again. Third thing is your hard drive, which is basically like the long-term memory of your computer. Everything that you download or put onto your computer stays there permanently until you delete it. Another techie part about your computer can be the ports. These can be your USB-C's, which are coming into the market now. You also have your USB 2.0, HDMI. These are all different ports that your computer might have. Lastly, we have the battery, the size, and the weight of the computer. These are a bit more simple to explain, but I will give you guys the ideal specs in my third tip. Tip number three, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the ideal computer. This is assuming that you're not doing anything crazy with your laptop or pushing it to the Mac. First, you wanna start off with at least an i5 Intel Core processor. I know it's a mouthful, but just look for it in your specs and on your computer. This is a great processor for doing daily activities like web browsing, video watching, word processing, but it can also take some heavier things like photo editing and video editing. You also want to pair that with about eight gigabytes of RAM, which will keep your computer running pretty smoothly. When it comes to your storage drive, you want to look for anything from 256 gigabytes and up. If you are a student, you're going to have a lot of documents, a lot of essays, unfortunately, even PowerPoint presentations, and that can start to take up some space. So you want to start at minimum 256. I'd say go up as far as a terabyte if you can, but if you can't afford it, you can always get yourself a portable hard drive. Battery life, I say go anywhere from eight hours and up. Ports are definitely something that is in the middle of changing. We have this era of the USB-C, which I think is great. You also have some technology that haven't necessarily updated to the USB-C. As a student, you might still have textbooks that come with CD-ROMs. You'll also have your USB key, which is usually USB 2.0. So you definitely want to keep that in mind when you're buying a computer. And lastly, we have size and weight. I think you want to go anywhere between 12 inches to 15 inches and anything under five pounds. I think that anything between that is good enough for travel, good enough for commuting, good enough for a student to carry in your backpack. And now I will give you guys some purchase tips. So you're going to take all the information that I just gave you and you're going to go ahead and go to a store and purchase your laptop. Now, what you want to keep in mind are two things. One, do not go cheap, but two, save your money where you can. I know it sounds almost like an oxymoron, but I'm going to explain it a little bit more. What you want to do is definitely get a reputable brand. This is important because this laptop is a big purchase and you definitely want it to be under a good warranty. You want this laptop to last you a decent amount of time. Brands do play a big part in the longevity of the computer. Some ways to save yourself money is to look for back to school sales or in-store sales. So these you can find online, you can find them in the flyers, but you wanna try your best to save money where you can. Don't go cheap, 
but definitely try to save money with your purchase. Another way to save money is to get it certified refurbished. So make sure, again, you get this from a reputable brand or a reputable computer store, but I got my MacBook Pro refurbished from Apple and I saved $800 and you would not know that it's refurbished. It looks exactly the same, nothing is wrong with it performance rise and I saved $800. And lastly, if you are going to buy online, use Ebates. It literally pays you to shop. You just have to go on their website, use the direct link from all the stores that they have on there and they're actually affiliated with a lot of stores. Once you go through that link and you make your purchase, you can get a certain amount cash back from your purchase. If you guys are interested in Ebates, I have a link down below where you guys can get started. So guys, that was my laptop guide. I hope you enjoyed it. What's up, baby? Oh, you're doing your thing. You know why your father said on the back, bro? I can say this is my daughter, she's saying. <laughs> that would make that one sound good. No, it's not. <laughs> For those of you going back to school, good luck. I know you guys are going to do great. See you guys next time. Bye.